I haven't done this in quite a while, so uh, I might be a little rusty with this. I haven't done a review since, I believe, TakeOver Portland? It's been that long. Jesus Christ. So, first and foremost, first review since then. Uh, long, long time, long overdue, and usually... When it comes to my reviews, I like to get it out on the day of, but or on the night of, but I decided to push it back a little bit because I didn't know how I was going to do this. But first and foremost, nice to see intro for SmackDown again. Then after the intro, saw Roman Reigns and Paul Heyman come out, and Roman cut his basic little promo saying what happened last week, and most important, hated what happened last week, hates most important what Edge said, saying that he's a liar, that he's not afraid of him, and at the moment, name dropped Brock and said for one second he had fear. And it propelled him to victory and smashing and stacking. I mean, merch sales. Because Roman is that damn good. And then the only reason Edge got to him is because he wasn't focused due to family and he wasn't in his and he wasn't in his mind. He had family business and then Jimmy Uso came out. Which was shocking to me. I I did not expect Jimmy to be in the Thunderdome, and then Jay came on. Jay came out afterwards after Jimmy was questioned that Roman took a vacation. <laughs> Although Roman said he earned it, but didn't take one. And then once Jay came out, he said he came back not just for Jimmy; he came back for Roman. Came back to do. Came back to become six times, seven times had champs, and then Roman said that's all he wanted. That's all he ever wanted. And then he hugged it out, saying, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it my way. The bloodline's together. Back together once again. It's amazing to see just how great Roman is. And actually paying attention to detail after watching SmackDown, clear, focusedly clear watching SmackDown for the first time in what felt like forever for me. It was pretty interesting to see. It was nice to see. It was a difference in standards. Uh, Corbin cut a promo backstage afterwards saying he lost everything. He's losing everything and he needs to win to qualify for money in the bank. And then he entered out with no music. Which, ooh, that was bad. That was, ooh. They're making me feel sympathy for Baron Corbin, which is crazy. And then Tampa, they show Tampa Bay Lightning celebrating their Stanley Cup win. Just as the same year as the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have won the Super Bowl this year. Uh, Tampa's winning really good, are they? Same that they don't have an NBA team. And then Big E came out for commentary, which I was confused by. I don't understand why. Uh, then they showed a highlight package of Baron Corbin's losses and losing his crown Going through depression, being no longer King Corbin. Corbin is the heel, right? And then Biggie and Pat were on the couch and had a little bit of a foot, little foot pedicure thing going on out there. It was very weird. And then they showed a picture. Oh, well, they showed the video of Nakamura and Boogs showing up in the arena in the Thunderdome in Corbin's old Mercedes. That thing went from an auction. I do like the intro. I do like the, uh, do like the, uh, entrance, though. Couldn't think of the word. I do like the entrance. It's a fun entrance with the electric guitar. Uh, reminds me of WrestleMania. Reminds me of WrestleMania 34, but not better than that one. But, yeah, pretty much. Corbin assaulted Nakamura, and then they cut the break. There was a couple breaks in there. But the match, honestly, was actually pretty fine. It was a standard run-of-the-mill match. In my opinion, it was probably one of the better matches they had because I actually watched this one closely because I haven't been able to watch SmackDown good enough for at least a number of weeks or so. Good enough to the point where I can actually review matches. And this was a fine match. And seeing Corbin... Uh, Corbin took a clean loss from the Kinshasa, and then everybody just celebrated around him. Highly just making Corbin depressed. And then Jimmy and Jay were backstage saying Jay wanted Jimmy and Jay were gonna handle some business before Roman did. And then afterwards, after another break, Tamina and Natalia came out for a tag match. It was reported by Mike Johnson. 
a PW Insider, and then Heal by Nature followed that up, stating that Shotzi, Shotzi Blackheart and Tegan Knox got called up. We're being called up from NXT to join the main roster to face them in the tag team match. And then they shortened their names from Shotzi Blackheart and Tegan Knox to Shotzi and Knox. Oh boy. Uh, the match was fine. It was a short match, very short. And it was a little bit of a botch in between. But Shotzi and Tegan got the win, which was surprising and actually pretty cool. I'm glad that those two got a win. I'm very glad to see what both are going to do on the main roster. And at Edge, Kate cut a promo and backstage said he was going to call out Roman. It's not a happy family reunion. And then Sonya Deville came out to make a decision. Because Bailey unfortunately got hurt. She'll be out for nine months. Apparently, reports are saying that it's a torn ACL. And I wish Bailey the best, the speediest recovery ever. The speediest recovery. She was carrying this map down women's division. Probably the best on the women's division. The best of the women's division of the Thunderdome. Of the overall in the pandemic era, she was the best. By far. Not even close. SmackDown Women's longest reigning SmackDown Women's Champion, and was putting on banger after banger, and had a great Hell in a Cell match with Sasha Banks. And it's a shame that she didn't get used at WrestleMania this year. She was used to be attacked by the Bellas. Love the Bellas, but Jesus Christ, no. Uh, Bailey cut a promo on YouTube, which I will leave a link in the description too. And then basically just afterwards, Sonya. Chose Carmella as the replacement. Uh, why? But she's already in the Money in the Bank ladder match. And then Liv Morgan came out after Carmella was in the middle of her promo. Liv Morgan came out understandably pissed and was just furious, only to get mas emasculated by Liv by Sonya, just like how Stephanie would do forever. But yeah, Carmella's the replacement for Liv Morgan. Well, Carmella's replacement for Bailey, while Liv Morgan's replacement for Carmella, as Carmella's gonna take on Bianca Belair next week on the first SmackDown Live with audience, live with the fans in Houston, while Liv Morgan is gonna be in the Money in the Bank ladder match for the women's side this Sunday. Next Sunday. Weird. I don't know. And then backstage, Paul Heyman, Roman Reigns, in the locker room. Paul telling Roman what happened with Edge. And Roman's pissed. All I hear afterwards is just, I'll, I'll just hear for the main event segment. And that was just, oh, the main event segment was great. Anyways, Seth comes out. I hear Burn it down! Not like how I would limp sync it, but, but anyways, Seth came out, got a promo for Tony Storm coming out to the main roster. Yes, please, Tony Storm is fantastic. One of the best female women's wrestlers in the WWE, especially on the, especially when she was in NXT UK, especially in NXT. Kevin Owens was out for commentary, and then Seth and Cesaro had their match, and it was fantastic. That match of the night, of course it was, because Seth and Cesaro never ceased to amaze to have a bad match. It was great all around. And seeing blood, like how Cesaro was bleeding from the exposed turnbuckle uh, spot, it was fantastic. It was added a little bit more drama and intensity, and it was just perfect in terms of storytelling and what a match should look like. Seth went clean with a stomp afterwards after Cesaro had a little bit of a mini burst. Is what I love in wrestling. It's what I love about wrestling overall. Pure wrestling and storytelling. I enjoy it so much. The Usos got in Edge's locker room, but he was empty. He wasn't there. Apparently, he wasn't there for a good reason. Because Seth Rollins was, gonna, was cutting a little bit of a promo. And Edge interrupted. Edge doesn't forget. He still remembers 2014. Yes, please. Give me that match, please. I need that match, please. But overall, 
Seth just knew that he was going to be Cesaro. And he's not on his level, and then he's going to be... He's the future present money in the bank. And reminiscing on cashing in on Roman's and he might not wait. Hmm. We got a promo for Alpha Academy, which was apparently Chad Gable and Otis backstage. I like it. I actually like it. Uh, Otis building as a, being built as a beast now. I enjoy that. And then Edge came out for the main event segment. And then next week we got a sec. Next week we got a fatal four way match to determine between the Money in the Bank participants, between Seth, Kevin Owens. Who was the other two? Jesus, that damn Christ. Biggie and <laughs> I hate myself. Seth, Ko, Biggie. Who? I was qualified on the SmackDown side. I forgot. This is gonna come to me. God damn it, I need to look this up. God, who qualified for money to bank on the SmackDown side again? I know there's one heel, but there's multiple faces in this match. Oh, Nakamura. Yeah. Whoops. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Shinsuke. Oh, I'm so sorry, Shinsuke. Uh, anyways, Edge called out Roman, and then that's when it transpired into an absolute brawl. Roman came out on his own, but Jimmy J came out saying that it didn't seem like something was didn't seem like something was right. And boy, they were right, because the Mysterios were ready with chairs to the back. It was a brawl, the end show. Jesus, I hope I don't get cut off again. I gotta be careful. But yeah. Uh the the show ended on it on edge doing the crossbar cross face is what I'm calling it. The crossbar cross face on Jay and Jimmy both in the ring. The brawl was great. Roman just walking away as the show goes off the air. Fantastic build to their match coming up this uh this Sunday. Next Sunday. I don't care. Whenever this video is uploaded, it's it's Money in the Bank. It's on July 18th. So, it was just a great way to end the show. They're probably going to build to a tag team match between the Mysterios and the Usos at Money in the Bank as well. So, the Bloodline is going to be deeply featured at Money in the Bank, which is going to be very, very intriguing and very awesome. I don't know how this is going to go. But anyways, for the final show in the Thunderdome for SmackDown... Absolutely great. Money in the Bank is... Money in the Bank, overall, is kind of... is stacked, really. I mean, there's only five matches, but... One of them may not be great. But, uh... Overall, it's, it's stacked. The women's side is still yet to be finished, while the men's side is absolutely filled to the core with some of the matches... Some of the best matches you're gonna see. I mean, the men's Money in the Bank ladder match is gonna be the show stealer, while... Roman and Edge is probably gonna have a match of the night. Big Bobby Lashley and Kofi is gonna have a great match. The Women's Money in the Bank ladder match, I believe, is also gonna be a great match. And then Rhea and Charlotte, I don't know how that's gonna turn out. But overall, four out of five for SmackDown. It feels good to be back doing reviews. I'm probably trying to figure out what this is going on with my phone. And he's cutting off after a certain period of time trying to do this videos in here and there. But uh, that was a great show. That was a great, great show. And I don't know, I'm going to try to do a raw review and get that out on the Monday night of, or maybe Tuesday, but I am back, I haven't left, I am doing reviews again, expect a Money in the Bank prediction video next week, and especially expect many more videos to come out soon. I got a little bit of a project I'm doing of the 20 maybe 20 best matches of the pandemic era so not just including the thunderdome but also including matches with no fans that was that would be including wrestlemania 36 all the way to the last raw uh make sure you stay tuned keep all the notifications on like comment subscribe if you want to i'm not gonna force it uh I have so much love and so much faith in the world that we are getting closer to better. But please continue to do.
do the right things, get vaccinated. I am vaccinated, fully vaccinated. If you're not vaccinated, wear a mask. Still do your part. Follow all the guidelines. Love, peace, happiness all around. Stay safe. I'm out.